are following three major headlines tonight here on King 5. Mountain snow is falling over our mountains tonight. And that's making for some very difficult uh, conditions on our passes. And the Huskies have landed in Houston ahead of the national championship. Plus, the FAA temporarily is grounding some Boeing jets, about 177-37 MAX 9s, after a panel blew off shortly after takeoff. But first, developing right now, a protest shuts down the northbound lanes of Interstate 5 in Seattle. Protesters have been marching on that busy freeway since just about 1.30 this afternoon. It's causing massive backups tonight all over Seattle. At one point, it's about six miles long near this area between I-90 and Mercer Street. This is a live look at the conditions right now. Anywhere you see red or yellow on this map, that indicates some serious backups along the highways and surface streets. King 5's Julie Calhoun is monitoring traffic conditions up to the minute now. Let's check in with her on what's going on out there. Julie. Hey, Steve, right now I'm at the corner of Denny and Melrose lanes. All lanes northbound I-5 are still blocked off. We're not seeing any protesters. They left the highway just moments ago. But what you do see, there are still cars here blocking the highway. It looks like washout crews are starting the process of moving those vehicles, going to have to tow them out. But you also do see a police presence here. This all started just after 1 o'clock this afternoon when WSP says a group of protesters walked on to I-5 northbound from Olive Way. Those protesters are calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Of course, this has been causing some significant traffic delays all afternoon. The latest update from Washington is that northbound I-5 between I-90 and Mercer Street, all of those lanes are still blocked off. The University Street on-ramp is also blocked off. They're telling people to expect heavy congestion and delays, so keep that in mind if you're having to hit the road. And at 1.6 miles of backup here, but again, we're seeing those are, lanes are still blocked off. Cars left here. Protesters are off the road, but cars were left there on I-5. I northbound. We'll continue to stay out here and bring you the up to the minute details. We'll continue to cover this and let you know. Steve, back to you. Julie, thank you. To our top story now, the temporary grounding in Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets after this happened. Terrifying moments in the sky. A panel on the side of an Alaska Airlines flight blew off while that plane was in the air. And we're hearing from passengers tonight. Typical flight took off. Uh, pilot came on, said, oh, we're crossing 10,000 feet. Keep your seatbelts on for a while yet. And shortly after that, you heard a big loud bang. We just heard like a loud bang or like a boom. And I look up and the air masks are like out, popped down. And I look to my left and there's just this huge like gaping hole. In the moment, a lot of tears. I just didn't know what was going on. But a thing I will say is I feel that a lot of people around me were a lot calmer than I would have thought for a situation like this. The plane was heading to Ontario, California at the time, but it had to make an emergency landing back in Portland. We have the audio from the cockpit tonight as that plane started to land at Portland International. Here's the call to air traffic control. We have team coverage for you tonight. King 5's Connor Board is tracking travel impacts with today's grounding. But let's start with our aviation expert, Kristen Goodwillie, tonight. So, Kristen, walk us through where the grounding stands right now and how we got here. Well, Steve, about 170 planes are impacted by this temporary grounding. And while the FAA mandated this today, Alaska Airlines voluntarily grounded their MAX 9s before any directive. I spoke with an aviation analyst about what exactly happened and why it's so unprecedented. Yes, we are emergency. We are depressurized. The video from an Alaska Airlines flight going from Portland to Ontario, California is shocking. I woke up to the plane just falling and I knew it was not just normal turbulence because the masks came down and that's when the panic definitely started to set in. It shows where a door plug flew off a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet while in flight, causing the rapid decompression of the plane. 
No passenger was seriously injured. This is a terrifying situation when it happens and you're in an airplane like that, especially if you happen to be close to that uh, sudden hole in the, uh, in the wall, so to speak. But the fact is, this airplane was never in serious trouble of not being able to be landed safely. From the outside, it looks like the outline of a door, but from a passenger's view, it was a normal window seat. It's there in case the customer of the Boeing wants to add another door later on. They don't have to make a major modification. Aviation so. analyst John Nance says this is unprecedented. Within hours, Alaska Airlines voluntarily grounded its MAX 9 fleet. The FAA issued an emergency airworthiness directive, temporarily grounding these affected planes until they're inspected and corrected. The FAA is saying what happened is likely to exist or develop in other planes. The NTSB is in Portland investigating. Did it fail because the structure of the door failed? Because clearly the structure around the door that it fits in did not. Or was it just not latched the way it should have been? Boeing says safety is a top priority and agrees with the FAA's decision. It also said in a statement that a technical team is supporting the NTSB in its investigation. Boeing, Alaska Airlines, the FAA, and even the NTSB TSB came together like a thunderclap immediately to not only ground the fleet until they could inspect it, but to find out as much as they could about what was going on. Nance believes it won't take long to figure out what happened. The fact is that we're going to, I think, see a solution or in other words, an explanation for what happened very quickly, even if they don't recover the plug, which fell someplace. Chris, I think a lot of people are hearing this news and hearing 737 MAX and wondering if this is tied at all to any of the previous issues. That is, I think, the number one question, especially people who aren't really into aviation or aviation experts, is they're saying, I hear the MAX on the news. How is this correlated? And the answer is, it's absolutely not correlated. There is nothing that indicates that anything that happened years prior has to do with this completely different issues. And so our experts were very much clear in that two completely different things and different planes. You know, while yes, the MAX, this is a separate issue with this door plug and this panel. A lot of people are heading out of town. We have people going to Houston. I know I have a trip to Texas later this month. How long is this going to last for them to inspect all these planes? Well, experts believe it's going to be pretty quick because essentially they want these inspections to be done fast. Airlines have that incentive. They don't want to have passengers waiting, having to rebook. With that said, Alaska Airlines has said that they've already inspected 18 of their planes and they're ready to go back in the skies. So I think that we are going to see this happen fast. Experts tell me they anticipate around either this weekend or early next week that we should see all of them inspected and get those results. Okay. Kristen, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate you being here tonight. Thanks, Steve. This grounding is causing a lot of issues for travelers, with dozens of flights at SCA Airport being canceled and people waiting hours to get rebooked. King Fives Connor Borg joins us live from the airport now with the latest there. Connor. Steve, right now I'm in the overflow area that's been set up to help Alaska Airlines customers rebook their flights. You can see it's a long line, and this is the line that people tell me they've been waiting hours in to rebook their flights, and that's because nearly 80 flights going in and out of the airport have been canceled today. You would imagine this group of travelers would be feeling all excitement since you can probably guess where they're headed. Of course, the national championship. But the trek to see the Huskies play in Houston has not been easy. Well, it's been rough. I woke up this morning and uh, our flight got canceled. His was just one of more than 70 canceled Alaska Airlines flights in and out of SEA Airport Saturday, all due to this. A Boeing 737 MAX 9 plane having a panel blow off over Portland. Safety first, I get it. I totally understand why Alaska's doing it. It messed up a lot of people's plans. So many that the airport had to open up an overflow area on the first floor of the parking garage to rebook people. It's rough. People waited five hours to get to the Alaska rebooking desk in order to get to their destinations. I was planning to get there today, but I don't know. We'll see. As time passed slow for those still in line, others were on their way to a hotel with no flights available today. We stood in line for three and a half hours and what got to Alaska table and you know they got us onto a redirected so 
at least they were able to do that for us. As they hope to get home soon from their holiday vacation, hopefully I'm home tomorrow. Others are doing whatever it takes to get to Texas. Now we have a stop in Denver and we get in a lot later now. Because even though it's now taking a lot more money and more time, that's what we got to do to watch our dogs. Getting to Houston to watch the game is worth it all. And we would drive if we had to. It's not even a, not even an option. So no, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. It's been a phenomenal season and excited for the boys. And in addition to the nearly 80 cancellations with Alaska Airlines here at the airport today, there has also been more than 70 delays with Alaska as well. At SEA Airport, Connor Board, King 5 News. Connor, thank you. We're going to check back in with you as passengers work to rebook their flights coming up at 530. And we are following this story up to the minute tonight as those new developments come in. If you do step away from the TV tonight, make sure you have our King 5 app handy. Just text the word app, that is APP to 206 448 545 and we'll send you a link to download it. Speaking of that big game in 48 hours, Washington and Michigan will finally clash in Houston for a national title. This here is new video of the team landing there last night and we have team coverage for you tonight beginning with our Jake Garcia live in Houston ahead of kickoff. Let's start with you Jake. Steve, no bulletin board material is needed. No one's depending on a pregame hype speech to find some extra energy. Monday's national championship game speaks for itself. But for three Washington players, they might have just a little bit more motivation, a burning desire to beat Michigan because they know Michigan. Giles Jackson has a knack for showing up when the lights are bright and the stage is significant. Call him Big Game Giles, a habit that started at the big house. Before Jackson was on Mont Lake, he played for Michigan, a return specialist and a gadget speedster. Scored against Ohio State. That was a fun moment for true freshman year. Uh, that was great. Uh, scored my first touchdown in the big house. Uh, so great moment for sure being there. Uh, lots of great memories. Jackson transferred to UW in 2021 to be closer to family and will face his former team on Monday. Meanwhile, getting away from family was a situation for Armand and Javon Parker. This is crazy because a lot of family group was root for Michigan. In a sense, they'll face their former team too. The team that was half an hour down the road from where they grew up in Detroit. Now they switched over and root for us now because they, they like, congratulations, we're rooting for y'all, go beat Michigan and stuff like that. So it's been a whole full circle moment. Javon and Armand have been in lockstep since the beginning. Identical twins who share identical traits. Every time we're on the field together, like, we get an extra boost. I love this boy right here, man. <laughs> we get to experience this whole thing, college football together, spend this life together. Their desire to beat Michigan, after neither was recruited by Michigan, is also the same. That is the goal. That is the goal to show. Them that they, they missed out on this, so we we here now. For Jackson, his DNA might be different, but what Monday means to him is cut from the same cloth. Can't get any better. Uh, two great programs going at it, honestly. So it'll be it'll be a fun one for sure. Jackson missed the first five games of the season for the Huskies with a broken thumb, but his fingers looked fine on his first touch of the season. It went for a touchdown in that big rivalry game against Oregon. This is technically a redshirt season for him, but he's eligible to play in Monday's national championship game per NCAA rules. Let's head over to Jake Wittenberg, who's with fans, fans that weren't impacted by that crazy travel in Seattle ahead of Monday's game. Jake. <laughs> It's media day, the first chance for players and coaches to address the media here in Houston at the national championship. And it's the first time fans get a chance to meet their heroes. Let's go Huskies! Yeah! Just want to get some more autographs and win this football game. Before the players ever set foot on the national championship football field. We got Hulk, Kalepo. They're here facing adoring fans at media day. The first big event for players and coaches since landing in Houston. I think we have 14. <laughs> All edging to catch a glimpse of their Husky heroes. I got a bunch of autographs from the Huskies, nine to be exact. Fans like the Fowlers I, I from Arlington. Put it in words, I'm going to go crazy in the stand <laughs> if we do win, and then just we will be on cloud nine. The Coronas from Bothell. All pumped up. <laughs> Ready to go. Go dog. And then there's the Smiths from Mercer Island. A house divided. Mindy attended the UW, but now have a son that goes to Michigan. We have a, we have a divided house. It'll be very energetic. 
a house divided and undecided. Who do you root for? How do you do that? Whoever wins, it's great. We'll have to console whoever loses in some fashion. <laughs> yeah. But go down. The big game's on Monday, but today, it already feels worth the trip. How many do you have now? Um, around 28 to 30. <laughs> I had a chance to ask head coach Kalen DeBoer about whether it's been difficult to keep this team grounded with all of this hype right now. He said not really. He says they're laser focused on the final step. In Houston, Jake Wittenberg, King 5 News. Our team coverage continues tonight in King 5 Sports. Chris Egan has the latest from practice today. He'll join us live at 550. Now to the latest in our mountain passes. Snow is falling over the passes right now, and it's already causing some issues for drivers. Highway 2 is back open tonight after those eastbound lanes were closed due to drivers who had spun out. Right now, traction tires are required on Stevens Pass and chains for larger vehicles. Currently, there are no restrictions on Snoqualmie Pass. Your first alert forecast is just three minutes away. Washington State Ferries is laying out its plan to restore service across western Washington. The bad news, it's going to take years. We'll tell you why. Safety first, I get it. I totally understand why Alaska's doing it, but just threw a wrench in our plans. And we are still following our top story tonight with the temporary grounding of some Boeing, jet, uh, Boeing jets. This is after a 737 MAX 9 bound for Ontario, California, had to make an emergency landing in Portland after a panel blew off that plane while it was in the air. The grounding is impacting passenger travel across the country tonight. We are cleared a close eye on our airport here now as it works with airlines to help those travelers rebook. We'll hear from King Fires Connor Board again at 530. We'll be right back. Shock and terror on board an Alaska Airlines flight last night after a panel blew off shortly after takeoff. The airline says the plane was bound for Ontario, California with 171 passengers and six crew members on board. The flight was at 16,000 feet when it happened. You could feel the air and it was very loud, but I'm glad everyone stayed calm and everyone had their seatbelts on. No major injuries were reported. The FAA has temporarily grounded Boeing 737-9 MAX planes until they can be inspected. And grounding is now causing issues for passengers who are now trying to rebook. King 5's Connor Board is at SeaTac Airport now. We'll have a live report from her coming up at 5.30. Washington State ferry riders are going to have to wait until 2028. That's when the ferry system says it will be able to get new vessels which will restore its service on all routes. King 5's Brady Wakayama breaks down the agency's contingency plan for the next four years. These ferries need to be functioning and budget needs to be a priority and we need to get these the ferry system working. A strong message to the Washington State ferry system from Jennifer Brothen, who's been relying on its services to get to and from our home on Vashon Island for 30 years. This is our livelihood. We depend on being able to get back and forth. There's a lot of people that not only live on the island, but tourism as well. And so it really impacts everybody. King 5 News has reported on the obstacles the ferry system has encountered over the years, dealing with aging vessels and staffing shortages, both of which are impacting services on routes. Every day you're commuting, you never know what you're going to get. And so you're really at the mercy of the ferry system, which is obviously very problematic most of the time. This past week, Washington State Ferries released a new contingency plan. The agency says full route restoration is not expected until it gets new ferries in 2028. Right now, it has 15 vessels it says it can reliably operate, with six other boats out of service due to staffing and mechanical issues. Washington State Ferry says restoration will be gradual and will depend on when new vessels enter service. Routes like the Fauntleroy, Vashon, South Worth, and Seattle Bremerton would all get another boat. However, the international service to Sydney, B.C. is currently shut down. The agency hopes to restore that in 2030. Reporting for King 5 News, I'm Brady Wakayama. 
Let's take another live look outside over our mountain passes. Snow is falling at the passes right now, already causing some issues for drivers. Right now, traction tires are required on Stevens Pass. Also, chains are needed for those larger vehicles. As of right now, there are no restrictions on Snoqualmie Pass, but of course, these conditions are changing quickly. Meteorologist Leah Pizzetti joins us now. So, we're talking some serious snow in the coming days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is storm number one right now. We get a little bit of a breather into tomorrow, and then the second very potent winter storm arrives. So, an extremely cold end to our week, so a lot to get through. Steve. Leah, thank you. We are still monitoring a developing story right now where protests had shut down the northbound lanes of Interstate I-5 in Seattle this afternoon. There was protesters marched on the busy freeway starting just before 1.30. They actually left the freeway within the last 15 to 20 minutes, but still there are massive backups all over the city as WSP works to move some vehicles that were left behind by some people who just didn't want to wait in the traffic. King Fire's Julia Calhoun is covering the protest and the fallout for us. She'll have the very latest as we get them. It has been three years since the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Five people died in the chaos, and 140 police officers were hurt. More than 1,200 people were arrested and charged with misdemeanors and felonies, ranging from trespassing to seditious conspiracy. More than a dozen are from Washington state. Just yesterday, President Biden kicked off his 2024 election campaign with a speech about the importance of protecting democracy, with a warning about empowering Donald Trump. This is the first national election since January 6th. Insurrection placed a dagger at the throat of American democracy since that moment. We all know who Donald Trump is. The question we have to answer is, who are we? That's what's at stake. We are still following breaking news right now on King 5. Travel impacts continue at SeaTac Airport tonight after a panel blew off an Alaska Airlines flight shortly after takeoff. That led to a temporary grounding of Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. King 5's Connor Board is at the airport now. Plus, a protest shut down the northbound lanes of I-5 in Seattle earlier tonight. Those protesters have cleared, but still the highway is closed and those massive backups remain. We'll have up-to-the-minute information on both of these stories ahead at 5.30. We'll be right back. We're still following breaking news right now on King 5. Travel impacts continue at SeaTac Airport tonight after a panel blew off of an Alaska Airlines flight shortly after takeoff last night. That led to a temporary grounding of Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. King 5's Connor Board is at the airport now. We're going to hear from her in about two minutes. But first, a protest has shut down the northbound lanes of I-5 in Seattle. There was protesters started to march on the busy freeway just around 1.30 today. It's causing massive backups even now at one point about six miles long between I-90 and Mercer Street. That's where it's closed. I want to give you a look now at a traffic conditions map. And right now where you see any red or yellow or any orange as well on this map, that is where you see major delays. Pretty much most of Seattle is dealing with some sort of fallout from this incident. King 5's Julie Calhoun is monitoring traffic conditions out to the minute right now. She'll bring us the very latest coming up on King 5 News at 6.30. Now back to our top story. Terrifying moments on board at Alaska Airlines flight last night after a panel blew off shortly after takeoff. The airline says that plane was bound for Ontario, California, with 171 passengers and six crew members on board. That flight was about at about 16,000 feet when it happened. I woke up to the plane just falling and I knew it was not just normal turbulence because the masks came down and that's when the panic definitely started to set in. Amazingly, no major injuries were reported, but after the incident, Alaska Airlines voluntarily grounded its 737 fleet so those planes could be inspected. A few of those planes have now been cleared and are back in the air tonight. But the FAA also issued its own temporary grounding for those planes until they could all be inspected. The grounding of these Boeing planes has caused travel to be difficult for hundreds of people who are flying with Alaska Airlines out of Seattle today. King 5's Connor Boy joins us live, live now from the airport with the impacts. Connor. 
Steve, so many people have been impacted by these flight cancellations that the airport opened up this overflow area in the bottom level of the parking garage. Now, this line behind me is all Alaska Airlines passengers trying to rebook their flights. Now, I've talked to multiple of these passengers today, and they said that this line took about five hours to get through earlier today. And today at SEA Airport, they had more than 75 Alaska Airlines flights canceled due to the grounding of the Boeing planes. Some people decided to switch to other airlines and actually paid for brand new tickets. Others are having to wait until tomorrow to catch a new flight out. And even though multiple passengers we spoke with today were frustrated, they were all understanding of the fact that this was about a safety issue. We'll hear from some passengers tonight at 6.30. At SEA Airport, Connor Board, King 5 News. Connor, thank you. Again, we'll see you at 6.30. We're going to follow the story up to the minute tonight for you as new developments continue to come in. If you do step away from your TV tonight, make sure you have our King 5 app handy. Just text the word APP to 206-448-4545 and we'll send you a link to download it. We want to get to our first alert forecast now with a live look at our mountain passes. Snow is falling at the passes right now. It is causing issues for some drivers. Thankfully, Highway 2 is back open tonight, but those eastbound lanes were closed for a while because of some drivers who had spun out. Right now, traction tires are required on Stevens Pass, and if you have a larger vehicle, you need to chain up. And no Kwame Pass. Currently, there are no restrictions, but we want to bring in meteorologist Leah Pazetti now. So, Leah, walk us through the system that's moving through. Yeah, Steve. So, the one that's impacting us right now and bringing that snow to the mountains is just about done. We could still tack on a couple more inches in the next few hours this evening, but overall, this one has done what it has set out to do. Here's a look at some 24 hour snow totals. We're hovering right around that one foot marker for most of us. Crystal Mountain white pass a little bit less for us, but Baker picking up more than a foot of snow in the last 24 hours and some significant low level rain as well. Here are our daytime hours. So since midnight tonight, we can see a lot of rain has moved through uh, most of Western Washington for the lowlands. So for this system, it is mostly low level rain and mountain snow. But as we head into the end of the week, that is going to change as another winter storm heads our way. But first, let's take another quick recap. This is the last 18 hours and we can see how that rain really just poured through. It started to taper off here. A few showers still lingering, but another storm is on the way here early into next week. I'll show you that one coming up. Leah, thank you. While driving needs uh, to, while drivers need to take some extra precautions on the passes this weekend, the snow is some great news if you're a skier or snowboarder. King 5 Julie Calhoun has the latest now from Snoqualmie Pass. People piling in the summit at Snoqualmie for a night ski run. Fresh powder, those are the days you want to get out. And more could be coming with mountain snow in the forecast. Yeah, so this is actually the first night I'm skiing this season, and there hasn't been that much fresh snowfall this year. So if anything, this is going to make me want to come more often. Snow on the Cascades, a welcome sight, especially as Western Washington mountains have seen below average snowfall. December was somewhat of a slow month when it comes to snowfall. So the turn of the new year has been great because all of a sudden old man winter came and dropped a bunch on us and we're looking forward to the rest of the month. Ski resorts say all it takes is one big snowstorm to turn things around and this could be it. If you're a skier or snowboarder in Washington, you've been waiting a long time for this. The snow has finally come. An estimated 30,000 people drive over the pass on a typical weekend day. And with fresh snow, Soquami Fire Department expecting a busy weekend. I-90 presents some pretty significant challenges for Soquami Pass Fire and Rescue in terms of uh, road conditions and car accidents. Fire Chief Jay Wiseman says his department responds to three or four serious crashes every snow event and most caused by drivers going too fast. On Thursday, WSP posted this photo of a driver that hit slush and lost control. Luckily, only minor injuries. We need drivers to stop overestimating their driving ability and underestimating the storm. First responders asking drivers to be safe and prepared so they can make it to the slopes. So it's game on. We're ready to go skiing and snowboarding. That was Julie Calhoun reporting. Now, conditions on the passes can change very quickly, so make sure that you keep an eye on any updates from WashDOT regarding tire and chain requirements before you head up to the passes. We are following conditions on I-5 up to the minute right now. A protest shut down the northbound lanes of Interstate 5 in Seattle this afternoon. Protesters started to march on the busy freeway just around 1.30. They have cleared out. They are now elsewhere on surface streets in Seattle, but a big problem remains on the freeway. 
freeway. It's the cars that were left behind. WSP says about a dozen of them were left on the road as that protest wound down. And again, it's moved elsewhere now. King 5's Julie Calhoun is covering the protest for us as well as the aftermath. She will join us live again at 6.30. And remember, I-5 northbound closed between I-90 and Mercer. And will be until we let you know. We'll be right back. King 5 sports coverage of the Huskies at the National Championship. Sponsored by UW Medicine. A higher degree of health care. We are now less than 48 hours away from kickoff in Houston, the head of the national championship. And one of the most popular members of the Husky squad will be there on game day. But before his trip, King 5's Farage Adrian sat down exclusively with UW's live mascot, Dumps. Fans love Huskies football and... I love Dubs. Dubs is my favorite. He'll be in Houston for the national title game, but long before this season, Dubs started scoring big in the hearts of Huskies fans. From the moment this dog was let loose on the field, his training team knew he was special. Whether he's running onto his home field or flying in style for the Huskies' Sugar Bowl win... You're tougher than a Wolverine. You're so tough. How tough are you? Head trainer and UW alum Annalisa Knight always checks in to see if he's ready. <laughs> Do we beat them all this season? <laughs> all of them? He comes from a long line of live mascot history dating back to the 1920s. In 2008, the name Dubs was chosen to be the title for all future pups. Would you take a treat from a Wolverine? Would you take a treat from a Husky? Yeah. Dubs, too, just turned six. He's an Alaskan Malamute, the strongest of the Husky breeds, according to his training team. His current toy of choice, a Wolverine chew toy. If a Husky fan is lucky enough to cross paths with Dubs, they usually want to ask for a photo or maybe even a high five. He just brightens people's day, and that's the reason why we do a lot of what we do, is just to kind of bring that embodiment of the UW. He is a spirit. About 90 people applied to take care of Dubs. His home is with the Knutson family, proud Husky alums. He's the Malamute, the myth, the legend, <coughs> Dubs. Reporting at Husky Stadium, Farah Jadrin, <coughs> King 5 News. Even this Sun Devil can admit that Dubs is probably the cutest mascot in the country. We're going to have uh, more live coverage for you from Houston ahead coming up in sports. Chris Egan will join us live in about three minutes. Let's look outside. Another live look at our mountain passes. Snow is falling over the passes right now. It's causing some issues for drivers and has been pretty much for a good part of the afternoon. Right now, traction tires are required if you're going to go on Stevens Pass. If you have a large vehicle, bring those chains with you and make sure you chain up. And right now, again, I'll emphasize right now, there are no restrictions on Snoqualmie Pass. But again, these conditions are changing quickly. So, Lee, we saw that this afternoon. Things kind mm -hmm. of popped and caught all of us, except for you, caught all of us off guard. Yeah, when you get those cells that move in, they move quickly. So we saw it in Seattle. It, it just quickly brushed through. It brought rain, and then it stopped. We could even see some flurries for the lowlands. Good evening, everybody. I'm Chris Egan, live in Houston. It was a busy day for the Huskies here today. They had media day and practice. How is running back Dylan Johnson doing? We will hear from the Huskies running back coming up next, plus a Seahawks preview and some college basketball. It's all live from Houston, and it's next. The King 5 Sports Report, sponsored by Xfinity. Stream your favorite live sports on the next generation Xfinity 10G network. Well, good evening from NRG Stadium in Houston. This is the place they will play the national title game. Number one undefeated Michigan taking on second ranked and undefeated Washington. Going to be a thriller right here on Monday night. Now, NRG Stadium holds around 71,000 fans and they are expecting a lot of Husky fans at the game on Monday. Today, the Washington football team had their first practice at NRG Stadium. They worked out here earlier today. It's a tradition at the last practice to trade jerseys running back Dylan Johnson wearing number 80 today. He was injured at the end of the Sugar Bowl, but he was on the practice field today. He says he has injuries to his right foot and left knee. He told me he won't be 100% by game time, but he fully expects to play on Monday. Oh, man, it's been pretty tough, but, uh, you know, um, just having my teammates support, my coaches support, uh, making sure that I'm on top of my treatment, 
um, you know, you know, going over the game plan every day, day in, day out. Uh, you know, it's been great though. It's yeah. been great. And you're feeling you, how? How are you feeling right now for everybody? <laughs> you know, as good as I'm gonna be. So um, I'm just ready to rock and roll, man, and help the team as much as possible. Before practice, the Huskies were busy at media day. The players and coaches spent an hour this morning talking to the media, taking pictures, and hanging out with the fans. It is a business trip. The Huskies know Michigan is a very good team, and they need to be prepared. But they're also enjoying this magical ride. Man, it, it's a dream come true, to be honest. You know, I, I'm still wrapping my head around it. You know, um, you know, just super blessed to be in this position. You know, this is something that, you know, uh, you dream of as kids, you know, coming coming to play for the national championship. You know, for us to be here right now, you know, all the hard work and dedication that it took to get here, you know, it, it definitely showing that it's paying, paid off, you know, but obviously we, we got to uh, make it make it happen. I mean, obviously we got to be tough, uh, be physical out there on the field, right? Uh, we say that every week. Uh, people doubt us and say we're not physical and not tough but we prove them wrong every week. Um, but Michigan's a great team. Uh, they're a tough team. You know, they're a physical physical uh, secondary that comes down in the run game and is able to defend the pass as well. So definitely going to be a challenge for us. Last night when the Huskies arrived to their Houston hotel, they got a very nice surprise from NBA All-Star Damian Lillard. Dame met with the players, took some picks, and then gave the Huskies some new shoes. We, we weren't expecting that, you know, just to see a legend be able to come in that room and just knowing that he's supporting us and for him to be able to give to us, man, I, that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm a Damon Lillard fan, bro. That's, <laughs> he's, I feel like he's the best player in the NBA. He's my favorite point guard. Almost, I felt like I was a little fan again. So <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it because I had to go and touch him to make sure he was real. <laughs> I, I know I probably, I don't know how he felt about it, but you know, I was like, oh my God. So yeah. No, that was crazy. So uh, I was, you know, blessed to be <laughs> had the opportunity to do that, man, and meet him. Awesome stuff. The Seahawks, meanwhile, they're in Arizona getting ready for their final regular season game. The Hawks need a win and a Green Bay Packers loss to get into the playoffs. In order to get that win, they need to go through the cards and Husky legend Buda Baker. The Bellevue High alum made his sixth Pro Bowl roster. Arizona's defense has some new faces, but Geno Smith, isn't too worried. Overall, you know, having Buddha back, I think our game was the first one that he played, and he's been playing, um, you know, pretty well throughout. And so, right, overall, so man, it's, it's really, really what we've seen. But uh, they have made some adjustments. They got some new personnel. And uh, overall, you know, just different players, but, you know, pretty much the same scheme. College basketball now. The Huskies yeah, taking on Oregon State down five midway through the first half. UW uses a 16-0 run to take the lead for good. Xavier Wheeler with the bucket. Now right before the half, the Beavers get a little lucky. They tip in the air ball. Huskies still up by five. Second half we go. Wheeler just keeps it coming. He scores 16. Keon Brooks had 26. Huskies win it 79-72. to Seattle U was also an action today taking on Cal Baptist Seattle U down 15 in the second half Cam Tyson sparks a comeback Redhawks going a 13 to 1 run crazy finish three seconds to play in the game Tyson shoots for the win it's off but Alex Schumacher is there for the putback is it good yes it is he just beats the buzzer Seattle U wins a thriller 48 to 46 and finally we head to Kettle Falls High School just north of Spokane on the 395 Zane Johnson launches this one from Curlew and beats the halftime buzzer. Johnson heaves, heaves it from 90 feet away. Everyone is stunned in the gym. Kettle Falls beats Ritzville by 30 points. What a game right there, and we should have a pretty good one here on Monday night as well. That will do it from now from Houston. We'll see you right back here at 630. Steve, let's send it back to you. Chris, thank you. We'll be right back. The King 5 Sports Report, sponsored by Xfinity. Stream your favorite live sports on the next generation Xfinity 10G network. One more check on our top story now. Within the last 10 minutes, the NTSB announced it will hold a press conference regarding the Alaska Airlines flight that lost its panel shortly after takeoff. 
After that, the FAA grounded Boeing 737 MAX jets temporarily. The airline says the plane here was bound for Ontario, California, and at 16,000 feet, that's when that panel flew off. No major injuries were reported. But the grounding of these Boeing planes has caused issues for travelers. Enough people were impacted that the airport opened up this overflow area in the bottom level of the parking garage. This is a live look there as people do rebook to work their flights. King 5's Thunderboard is there. We'll hear from her at 6.30.